Today I will be converting this 2017 Dodge Ram Rebel 1500 from air to coil using the Monroe conversion kit. This truck has 204,000 miles. It's been a workhorse, I can't complain. 140,000 miles since I bought it of towing cross country. I bought it with around 60,000 miles. The air suspension worked great when I got it. Of course, after 140,000 miles of maxing out its tow capacity, it's seen better day. The back sags when I have it parked for an extended period of time. You'll get the service air suspension light. I think I have a small leak in the rear, but nonetheless, I need to repair this issue. Before doing anything that requires jacking up your Dodge Ram 1500 with air suspension, you're gonna wanna make sure you go into your control settings scroll down to suspension and click tire jack mode so here we have the monroe air to coil conversion kit it consists of three part numbers that you'll need to order to make sure you're going to have everything you need to convert all four corners of your truck today i also will be installing this air lift 1000 you know, manual cheap style airlift system since I will be continuing to tow with this truck here. Now, when it comes to tools, I have a three piece ball joint separator, this 90 degree wrench because on the rear shocks, there's a bolt to the strut that's extremely difficult to access. So I'll be using this to access that bolt. Then I have a angle grinder here to cut off where I will be replacing the bump stop. And then I have a DeWalt 205 piece mechanic tool set. And this 25 to 250 pound torque wrench for the ball joints and other component. And a cobalt, you know, whatever this thing is, big old drill. The corded one was a lot more expensive. I went with the cheaper $150 one that came with the sizes that I need for today's project. Then we have some three ton jack stands, which for safety, we'll probably be adding some logs and other, you know, budget friendly items to prevent death. And a three ton jack, of course. As of now, that's all I think you need to get this project done. And we will see because I'm going to do it right now uh also got a pair of wire brushes and some uh, spray cans of rust-oleum because while i'm down there i will be doing my best to eliminate and prevent future rust problems stay tuned jack it up jack it up jack it up jack it up have it all jacked up jack stands under the frame jacked under the cross member cinder blocks on the front and back of each tire i'm not working on let's get into it So while I'm doing this, I'm watching the Monroe how-to video and it reminded me to put a support under this uh, A-arm. So I did so and let's begin. All right, let's see if I needed to buy my, my, nope. So these parts right here. Wait, wait, necessary, let's get the necessary on the other side. Okay, so now I have disconnected the tie rod end and I don't know about you, but bolts do go missing. So it's best just to kind of put it right back where it came from and now, Monroe's next step is telling us to disconnect upper ride height sensor arm from the upper control arm. So long story short, that means this thing right here. So, so I know that was a little too fast to see what went on, but not a lot went on. I used a flathead screwdriver to pry this piece off the top. And then I used a 10 millimeter to remove these two bolts. Remember, this is YouTube, so all the products and things I mentioned today will be in the description. Oh. All right, so now Monroe is telling us to remove the upper anti-sway bar end link nut cushion and retainer, meaning this right here. Okay, 
So now it says remove the lower strut mounting bolt and save for use. I have a one socket on this side, but unfortunately it's not a deep socket and I can't click my ratchet into it. But it goes in there a little bit. I'm gonna see. Make sure you have a deep socket for this side because this is not an ideal way to do it. But it's the way that I have the ability to do it right now. Deep socket, but we got it done with this. That's all that matters. You gotta get it done. Brush this off and make sure it's heavily greased to make sure this rust doesn't get too out of hand. So we don't lose anything. Remove the upper strut mounting nuts. All right, so we've removed the lower bolt from the front shock here. And now we're gonna remove these top bolts. They're 16 millimeter. I'm dodging them high price parts and ramming them. Yeah, yeah. Let's slide this puppy out. I can fucking see her going to Christian school. And that, folks, is why you're supposed to deflate your air suspension before you do this. I couldn't figure out how to do it. I Googled it. I YouTubed it. I said something about accessing the, the rear system through the cover, but didn't do nothing crazy when I just did that. So I'm not too worried about it. I haven't zip tied the cords out of the way yet because before I do, I'm going to make sure that I have access to all these little rust spots, which I'm gonna metal brush and spray over real quick while I'm down here. By the way, Monroe made a great 11 minute video here. If necessary, remove the lower control arm support to aid in removing the strut assembly. So that might help us out. Let's see. Upper strut assembly. So they're saying we might have to remove this nut in order to here we go this is your good while it lasted air suspension a problem just now it's a pretty big problem and that is that Monroe wants you to buy two different part numbers for each front shock well I just put them side by side and I cannot tell the difference I mixed up the boxes uh, foolish me I'm gonna see if this one lines up better with this side maybe there's a difference that I can't see with the naked eye I think it's time to remove this bolt. I didn't think I was gonna have to do it. And I didn't to get the old one out, but it looks like to get this new one in. I'll have to do that. I think my gun's too big to get up in there. So just turn it to where you can put some elder bolt grease into it. So I was having trouble removing this bolt. I foolishly tried to pry it out and I damaged this right here. If you need to remove this, you just gotta bang on it with the hammer very hard after loosening it up and it will free. Installing the new strut assembly. 
only one way to put these babies in because it's like a little triangle formation on the bolts. The top of the triangle faces the exterior of the truck. so I wouldn't lose it, but it prevented me from uh, right away. Let's see what Monroe says now. They're gonna tell me to put the top three bolts on. tie rug. It's been the long, but as you can see, so now is when the torque wrench comes into play. All these bolts are gonna have to be torqued down to a specific setting. I'm worried about this damaged fitting sleeve or whatever you wanna call it, but I can't worry about it now. I just wanna make sure it doesn't leak. Grease that's in there profusely. This thing is super tight on there, so if you have trouble with it, just know that yours might be like mine and it's almost like you have to unscrew this thing and then screw it back on because there's really no play between the threads and this little fitting here i'm sure it's probably meant to be like that for a reason but i'm just mentioning that because it caught me off guard a little bit once all these bolts to be torqued if i'm not mistaken all right this one is torqued down to 40 pounds plus a 200 degree turn. This one is torqued down to 22 plus a 90 degree turn. This one is uh, going to be tightened loosely, quote unquote, tightened loosely. So I will tighten it loosely. It says tighten loosely, but I'm gonna tell you about as loosely as I think it was when Trying to decide whether I should add. They did say loosely, and I don't think that's split loosely, but I'm gonna loosen up a little bit so I don't regret. And as you can see, while I was down here, I brushed off some. I think as max wrist strength is probably loosely. I think the next step is to place the wheel. You gonna show somebody else how to do it? Yeah. Here we are on the passenger front side of the car, doing the same thing we did on the other side. Hopefully it's easier this time. This bolt was the biggest issue I ran into on my first try and uh, all I had to do was whack this part and it popped right out. 
I was trying to pry it. I damaged this bushing. I might have to replace this whole piece because of that. So avoid doing that. Do not try to pry this. It's not gonna help you. You need to bang this as hard as you can with the hammer, preferably a small uh, sledgehammer. In the Monroe video, they just like pulled this up and it was like effortless. And I was like, what the hell? I'm like, is this stuck? Is there some problem with my truck? Is it a different model? That I don't know what I was thinking. Easy as pie. Oh shit. We're getting there step by step. Let's put the bolts where they need to go. Before where they go, where they don't need to go. See? We got one on the loose, people. The whole job comes down. Organization and precision. Without that, you can have all the best tools in the world. And you ain't gonna get her done. Alright, so now we're at the spot that I was talking about earlier that was hard for me right here. Like 35 minutes doing dumb shit on the other side. So I hope that saves somebody some time. All right, now that's loose. You already took your nuts out. And the strut, <laughs> it comes with, the new strut that you get from Monroe comes with uh, new hardware. So you don't have to worry about really saving those. I did, because I didn't realize it. On the last one, but when I pulled out the new shot, oh shit, look at that. Step skipped. Well, they told me to do it one way, but. Sometimes. You don't want to fuck around, you just need to swap her out and look at that. After 32 days and 7,200 miles of towing up to 8,500 pounds, going through rough terrain, I can say that this is a great option that provides a smooth ride, improved handling, peace of mind, all for a fraction of the cost of repairing or replacing that pesky air suspension system. Everything looking shiny. So day two, I started yesterday around noon. Got the bag jacked up. The airbags hovering over, ready to get a spring put in there. So a lot of people are saying that this liner is really a bitch to take out. Let's see if they were lying or not. Okay, so once you get these bolts off and then uh, the one that's behind it, if you have a trim, you might have one there. So now it's just like sitting there. Yeah, it's all sitting there, I'm pretty sure. Okay, so in the Monroe video did it fairly easy but I forgot to record when I was taking the tabs out, but it's very simple. It's literally three little plastic tabs that you bend. And you know, when you have the truck uh, jacked up right where the frame is jacked up and the axle is supported, then it just comes out very easily. You remove these tabs, pull from the bottom, it comes out. Skipped a couple steps, but it's very easy to clip. Just literally clip out, you pop it off. I just cut it with the knife at the top. Then remove this, remove the ride height sensor, onto the next step. All right, so this is the trickiest bolt uh, in the video from the manufacturer. They have a bent 21 millimeter wrench. Uh, if you're able to find that, more power to you, but this is the only thing that I could find. I tried to find a crow wrench, but they did not have a 21 millimeter crow wrench at my nearest low. So 
I'm hoping this works. I'm thinking it will, and I think that this tool will come in more handy with me for me in the future than the crow's foot. So it fits on there, no problem. I'm pretty sure it's on there right now. Yeah, there's a pretty long nut back there. See, sometimes I'll leave my common sense at home. Let me go and get a longer 21 socket. So we can actually grab that. Okay, so that 90 degree angle thing ain't gonna work down in there. Let me get a picture of this bolt. It's a very hard to get to bolt. The frame is sitting at the end. I know it's not the most professional solution, but we have a monkey wrench here that's been modified to fit in this little space. Try to look for a 21 millimeter wrench, I can't find it. I might have to make it shorter. Same very, you know, rudimentary, if you will, but let's hope and pray. I think now it's gonna be turned the other way. Aha, uh -huh. it wasn't the most professional solution, but I ain't the most professional man either. Ha <laughs> ha, I thought I was out of the game for a bit there, baby. But we're still in there. Hey, you cannot find the cut monkey wrench on Amazon, but you get the point. Cut any 21 millimeter wrench. Okay, so I'm not having to remove this shock before I do the bump house, you know, whatever, bump stop removal. Because I'm using an angle grinder and I can't get in there unless I, I remove this, uh, this strut. So here we go. With the old <coughs> and with the new, we get this thing cut off. Okay. All right, so as the Monroe again, we're gonna keep mentioning the Monroe video because that's what I'm watching the whole time that I'm doing this. We're gonna cut it at the welds. I don't know how I'm gonna fit in there. I might have to do some ring, ring, and some bang, bang. I don't know. Okay, so I'm doing the bump stop removal and I have an angle grinder. My battery died and it's charging now, but I already cut the weld off this side. Believe it or not, I'm cutting it with this. And it's off. No matter how you do it, just cut this off. That's the step. So this is taking me a little bit longer than normal because I'm recording and metal brushing everything down and just spraying it with some Rust-Oleum on down here. I figure it could help more than it hurt. And I'm already down here, so why not? So here we are. We cut off the bump stop, the old one. We got this new one in. We're gonna tighten it down. I uh, forgot to paint after I drilled, so all the shavings stuck to the paint. Okay, so the way I have my truck jacked up is it's not allowing me to fit this thing in there. So I'm doing another little engineering. Let's see if it works. Safest 
easiest way to do it or the most professional way, but what else do you want? We gotta get it down. And just like that. Get out to here, you see. So I ratchet strapped the spring to compress it just like I did before, but this time I put the airbag in through the top like I should have done before. And uh, so now it's in there like it should be. It's got a little pain on it, but we're good to go. All right, so we had the airbag in there and now we put this protector on the top and ran the line through the uh, bump stop bracket and over onto the top onto the valve thing there so we're all good due to technical difficulties i was unable to record the last steps in this procedure but it's just reverse engineering what you did to take apart the rear suspension put the monroe shock in reinstall the ride height sensor and you're back in business thank you for viewing today i hope all your air suspension system problems go away